Hello there, look at this car. Look guys, I know I've told you I've got a GTS on order. Something I have not been telling you. I've been toying with you a little bit. Look at this car. You know what it is. I don't have to tell you what it is. It's in my color. It's shark blue. I know this is a Cayman channel, but all Caymans are great. But this is a GT3, a GT3. And it's my car, my car. What an awesome car. I just can't wait to get into this. Do you mind? What are you doing here? Well, I think I heard you say this was your car. Yeah, it's mine. It's, look at it. Shark Blue GT3. Uh, I think we better tell the audience, actually, this is actually my car. Uh, I'm Roger Bailey. Uh, you may have seen me on my channel. There will be a description in the uh, comment section below to my channel. And um, there's no description in the channel, is there? No. Uh, there, there will be no link to Roger Bailey's <laughs> channel. He is not on YouTube, OK? He is not a YouTube personality with Porsche Chester whatsoever. Roger, I mean, this is a fantastic car. I mean, it's shark Thank blue, you. it's my colour. The Thank first you. time I'm seeing shark blue, the first time I'm seeing a GT3, it's phenomenal. I can only imagine how over the moon you are. <laughs> I am, yes, thank you. I am absolutely over the moon. Um, yeah, and we just need to sort of take it out for a drive, don't we? Wow, you've got the shark blue seat belts as well. That's great, oh, mate. You're back again. Yeah, yeah. yeah back again. you know me, I, I can't stay away from these cars. <laughs> no. I was about to head off home and uh, I've, I've travelled all this way. You know, I might as well be a little bit cheeky. Uh, do you mind if I get a drive? Uh, not a chance. <laughs> At least I asked. At least oh. I asked. Oh, all right then. You've twisted my arm. Do you want to drive? <laughs> Enjoy. Has this just happened? Has, has this just happened? <laughs> well, you know what they say, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Not that Roger's a horse, but he's definitely a gift to us. <laughs> My God. Oh, yes. Oh. I'm in a GT3. <laughs> Roger, I'll, I'll be back as quick as I can, honest. Did you want something, Roger? Uh, I think I'm going to come with you. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man, what a legend. What uh, a legend. I couldn't let you experience all this on your own. <laughs> OK. Oh. So, what do you think of the levels of noise? Well, I like it because there is noise. And you know the GT products, it's all about emotion and drama. It is. It is about the drama. I genuinely thought it would be quite a hard ride, but it's not at all. No, it's not really. Size-wise, when you're, when you're going between this and the Spider, do you, do you feel much of a size difference? Yeah, you do actually. The Spider is definitely more compact. Uh, it's a little bit easier to place on the road. Uh, this feels just slightly bigger. You can tell it's a bigger car. Um, in terms of width and length when you're parking up and whatnot. But uh, other than that, they've both got the Porsche DNA. They're both obviously coming from the same factory. Um, yeah, it's nice to compare the two. This, of course, is PDK, which was an easy decision for me. Um, a lot of people say you've got to keep the manual and it should be a manual car. I don't agree with that. I believe this GT3, for, in my opinion, should be a PDK gearbox. And I'll tell you for why in a minute. Uh, the Spider, that particular car suits being a manual gearbox. It's a smaller car, less power, uh, it's got more torque. Uh, this car is noticeably lacking in low down torque. Um, so the PDK gearbox takes nice care of that. It's always got the right ratio. The manual gearbox doesn't necessarily always have the right ratio. It's very tall gearing, which is fine. There's loads of torque in that engine. Whereas this car, 
seems to uh, just follow the road around here to the right, Max. It's got a clue where it's going. Yeah, you're going to test the width now because we're just approaching a great big lorry. <laughs> Not to make me nervous at all. So that's my take on the, um, the PDK versus manual gearbox. I may actually put out a video on that because it's interesting that a lot of people seem to think that they should be in a in manual format and I, I for me I disagree. I mean so I don't I have not driven a PDK GT4. How do you feel that the, the how they've programmed the box here? Well why don't we um, answer that by clicking the thing into sport mode. It's just one twist that little dial there on the steering wheel. To the right. To the right? Yeah. Ooh. Okay yeah. now you heard the revs just yeah, rise slightly there. It's yeah. dropped the, it's dropped at least one gear. Uh, the sports exhaust has come on and everything's just sharpened up slightly um, and it is now always in the right gear for spirited driving. Uh, what I tend to do though, the most important thing when you drive this car I find is you just knock this selector to the left and put it in manual and that's the way I drive it. Sport, sport mode in uh, manual gear selection and then I change gears on the uh, on the flappy paddle. This is not the best of road surfaces, but the uh, the composure is all there. What they've done, uh, the engineers, they've managed to reduce the amount of suspension travel by a half over the previous GT3. Really? Uh, and they've made the ride more compliant as well. I have no idea how they've done that, but that's what people are saying. It's got, uh, a, yeah. it's got a suspension setting here. Um, you can't see it, but there's a, there's a switch here on the dash to firm up the ride a little bit, uh, more control over the shock absorbers. It basically, it just stiffens the shock absorbers up a little bit. And it um, doesn't make a huge amount. You can tell when you're driving on normal roads. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference though. I imagine on track though, it'll make a difference because the spider's the same. It makes a difference when you switch that suspension, stiffen the suspension up. I did notice, as I started it, there was something like, um, be careful of engine running program or something. Oh yeah, it's I didn't fully it. read it, but well, the benefit of being based on the 992 generation of cars is uh, you get all this infotainment and information that comes through. Um, it's the latest, which previous cars didn't have any of that. So it tells you loads of things like that, for instance. It tells you that the car's not run in yet, and to take it easy. That's phenomenal. Useful. I'm just so thankful, appreciative. This wasn't planned. Uh, Roger, out of the goodness of his own heart, just said, uh, would you like a drive? Which is an awesomely grand gesture and it's something I'll never forget, Roger. Honestly. It's only a car, you know. Wow. That's the way I feel about these things, the cars that's to be used. You know, I'm not a particularly precious sort of person. I believe they should be used and enjoyed and of course share, you know. I've got to say, I'm loving looking in a shark blue wing mirror seeing that flared wheel arch. Like, I'm a Cayman driver, but you see a lot of rear wheel arch in, in shark blue popping in the sunlight and it's a glorious view, absolutely glorious. Can I ask you what you think of the um, seat that you're sitting in there? This is a, these are the new sport seats. They're slightly different, they've changed them for this model. They're slightly wider uh, by a few millimetres. Um, well, what do you think of the seating position, can I ask? Super, super kind of comfortable. Because I know there was someone that was basically saying they didn't like the, because it's, it's non-adjustable rake on the back. Yeah. But for me, this is generally how I drive. Interesting you mentioned the extra width, because um, I do feel that extra width. And for me, and my slight frame, I could, I, it, it could be a bit tighter. I wouldn't mind that. I think it's a sign of modern life, isn't it? People are getting a bit wider, so Porsche seats are getting a little bit wider. I could be wrong there, by the way. You know what, Day, days can be so unpredictable. And I, you know what, generally speaking, I've been thinking a lot on this whole trip is try to have a really positive outlook in life and you never know what's going to happen. I can honestly tell you, when I woke up this morning, I had no idea I was even going to definitely meet Roger Bailey or even, even be behind the wheel of a car like this. And, you know, something that comes out in Roger's videos as well, he's like, you know, just, just be positive, you know, enjoy the stuff that you've got and just crack on and uh, if I can use one of my own phrases, Roger, enjoy life and cars to the max. It's exactly. quite a catchy phrase, mate. That's a perfect phrase. I want to tap the throttle a little bit. Tap it. Nice. Ooh. The shifts are so seamless. Did you have to think long and hard that you were going to go PDK or was it a very kind of, it's, it's, it's a very simple decision for me? 
it was always going to be PDK gearbox. Uh, now I was looking at reviews and um, people's other opinions, and they were saying it's got to be manual. So I thought, okay, let's have a think about this. Um, and I was went out for a drive. And I was driving the Spider with its manual gearbox, which is a brilliant gearbox. And I just thought, no, you know what? It's got to be. It's got to be PDK for this yeah. car. When I was tracking the Spider, you find yourself. It's such a talky engine. You find yourself leaving it in second and third gear. So you've only got two gears, which is a shame. Um, but this car, it'll be. I expect you'll be enjoying going through all the yeah, ratios yeah. as you go around the, around the circuit. I mean, we were driving in North Wales, and I'll, I'll be brutally honest, when I shift gear, I know there's weight transfer happening in the car. Between, you know, as, as I've disengaged, I've put my foot on the clutch, I've disengaged the power, you feel the weight shifting, and obviously, I may be quite quick with my shift on lifting up the clutch, so, you know, it's not, it's not seamless like this, no way. How are you finding the steering? The steering is super direct and precise, and that's what I love. The GT steering rack is a special thing, and, and forget all that nonsense about electrically assisted hydraulic, because I, I kind of mentioned this in a video I did yesterday. Um, who's to say hydraulic's the best? Because the Lotus owners will say unassisted is the best way to go, so that's just a pointless argument to say it's electric, it's hydraulic, whatever. Drive it, feel it, make your mind up. I'm giving very, very tiny inputs to see is there like any slack, but you're speaking with the wheels. You, you've got a hotline to the wheels, basically. <laughs> there, there's no operator in the middle. What a car, what a man, what an owner, what a day. This has been Max Revs with Roger Braley. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to say before we get into the dealership for our viewing public? Glad you enjoyed it, really. Um, oh, it's more than enjoyed, I can believe me. It's, a, it's a, you know, it's actually just as nice seeing other people driving it, really, and enjoying it. This is for me. Yeah. Very, very happy for you, Roger. Thank you very much, Roger. Um, you have helped me enjoy life and cars to the max, and uh, I'll never forget this, Roger. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>